okay with that now, you're doing okay, so this isn't about my um, mental health or anything like that, this is a, um, a blog or video blog, whatever you call them, about um, chemsex and um, crystal meth, Tina, whatever you want to call it anyway, so As you may know, all right, from earlier videos um, and the other stuff I've said, you know, I have been involved or I've been involved in sexual health for gay men since 1993, 27 years ago, okay? So giving out condoms and advice on the Hampstead Heath to um, gay men who are cruising, that's a big park in um, North London where there's a huge area where guys cruise for sex. To in training courses around safer sex and HIV awareness, uh, stuffing condom packs to Cape Pride and giving them out, all of that. Uh, working and pay to um, go around gay bars and gay clubs and saunas the Ken Parks to, to give advice about safe for sex condoms, about HIV, STIs, all of that, you know, and that was um, 2000 to 2004. Again, I was working again 2006 to 2008 in um, similar thing in Wakefield, which is Yorkshire. So I've got a lot of experience, knowledges and stuff like that, okay. And I've also had friends' lives that have been destroyed through crystal meth. I've seen it, um, and it's horrible. And um, a friend of mine lost his best friend through it, um, who died of um, sepsis from injection, you know. Anyway, a friend of mine called David Stewart, who is really uh, an authority on this, um, works very tirelessly around it, was doing a talk at an art gallery about chem sex and I commented on the video um, to, to, to it, I put very interesting, I, long, I no longer have sex because of my looks and the fact that I am not mostly enough or sexy enough or attractive enough, so I guess that is a blessing. I've seen so many lives of people get involved with this destroyed and our community refuses to take responsibility for itself. Anyone who questions the issue is labelled and attacked as a brood or a homophobe. I am one of, I would imagine, many gay men who feel ostracised and isolated from the gay male community. I do not live my life on my cock or my sexual desires. I worry about young men who feel that this is the norm and get involved because they feel they have to be part of the community. And this is based in facts, okay? So, we have austerity and a lot of the young youth clubs for young LGBT people have been shut down due to cutbacks, okay? Now, where do they go for support? So if you're a young gay man, gay man before COVID, you know, because the apps now are kind of restricting things, you'd go on Grindr or you'd go wherever and, and you'd see all these guys, you know, and you might get messages invited to these parties, yeah, and not have your awareness around sexual health or anything like that, boundaries, etc. And you would perhaps go because you think it sounds fun. It is fun. Sex is fun. You know, and sex is fun and great. You know, but you might end up in a compromise that you know there's been sexual assaults hugely. Huge numbers of them have to take place because guys are so out of it, they're not in control of themselves, and, and this is a fact. Many guys have reported um, abuse because they've not been in a fit state to say no. People have died and they've been left in rooms for days while the parties go on. You know, some guys have had so much sex with skin and the tick is coming off. You know, a guy shat himself on the way back from one of these parties. He couldn't control his bowels, you know. Yet, in some level, it, it is fun, but there isn't a real connection there. It's fueled by Chris Cornett and Tina 
and there isn't much love, concern, intimacy, you know, it's all about sex and sexual desire. And that ain't necessarily a bad thing, but when it's in those circumstances, it is mostly not a good thing, you know? And many girls try desperately, desperately to get out of it because of how addictive it is. It is very, very addictive, you know? And it is such a powerful drug, you know, people will have sex for four days without eating and without sleeping, you know. So it's not really good for your health. Anyway, this guy, but, um, a bitter, dried up sex this can do with conservative tendencies, whining about younger people and their sex lives, shocking. You see, this is part of the problem we're dealing with here is that, that, that the debate is seen as polar opposites. You know, you're either completely for it and, oh yeah, it's really great, let's do it. Or you're a conservative prude, you know. And that isn't it, isn't the case. Okay. Anyone that questions it is labelled a conservative prude or a bigot or a homophobe or whatever. And it ain't about that, it's about having compassion and concern and love for my brothers, my gay and bisexual and trans brothers who get themselves into situations that they can't get out of because of pressure, because they feel pressured to do this by the community because it's seen as a community norm, you know. And, and this is in some respects, you know, born out by society. I don't know if you've heard of a serial killer called Stephen Ports. Okay, he killed at least four gay men. Okay, now he, he gave them huge quantities of um, GBH, which is a very, very powerful drug. You know, literally one milliliter of liquid can be the difference between uh, having a good time and being dead, basically in a coma. Now he left these bodies in in uh, a graveyard in East London, and um, the police are currently being prosecuted about this because um, of internalised, well, institutionalised homophobia <laughs> in the in the. You know, great in, in the London police force, so chaos of breeze, you know. So, anyway, when the third body had been found in the same place <laughs> and the same circumstances of GBA, you know, GBH overdose, the police assumption was this is what gay men do they take drugs, have sex, and die of drug overdoses because. At the time, there was a, a large number of, of overdoses of that drug in primarily gay saunas and stuff, something like um, 50 in one year, you know, so one a week, basically, you know. And that was the perception, so there is, there is that perception. So, like I said, a young gay man or a gay man that's just come out who doesn't have access to support groups and social networks and stuff like that. They feel this is the only avenue in order to participate in the community, if that makes sense, you know? Um, I'm not bothered by that response. He's, you know, he's a young, you know, he's a young gay guy. And, you know, in my experience, a lot of gay, young gay guys are, are entitled bitches, you know, they, they are reaping the rewards, the seeds that my generation sowed and the generations before me sowed in advocating for gay rights. And, you know, they're, they're popular in their group of friends because they're a the gay guy, you know, and all that malarkey, which is great. But they have this attitude of entitlement and not really appreciating the experience of, of, of older gay guys like me, you know, that have seen things and experienced a lot, you know, um, the first, <laughs> the first gay pride I went on f six 
six were smashed against us, stones were thrown at us, and bottles were thrown at us. And the police were stood like this, calling us fellas under our breath. And when we got to the Brixton tube station to go to the park, the largely and um, largely black community, because the big black community in, in Brixton, you know, these, these Seventh day Adventist people, Christian types, were lined up spitting at us as we were walking towards the park, you know, shouting all this, all this Bible crap about, you know, going in hell and stuff like that. This is stuff that we've experienced, so we know what we're talking about, you know. Um, and it frustrates me, you know, I'm anything but a fucking prude, you know, Jesus, <laughs> anyone that knows me knows that's the case, you know, and I would love to have sex, I would love to be able to have a healthy sex life, but I choose not to due to mental health reasons, you know, and I am bitter about other people having sex, you know, my concern is it should be healthy sex, it should be sex for, you know, health is it, and I don't think going to a sex party for four days, not eating, you know, and just constantly having sex for four days till you dip is raw, or you're shitting yourself on the way home because you've been fucked by so many guys, or you have it to write on your back, you know, ask me first, or you get into a state where your semi is face down and guys are lining up to fuck you. You know, um, there's lots of stories I could tell, you know. In a sauna in Manchester, okay, someone died. Okay, they died, they shut themselves and died. And they were face floor, face down on the floor in one of the rooms and somebody was fucking them, and they were dead. They were dead. They shot themselves. So sort of shit all over their ass, you know. And this guy fucked them. Fucked them. The guy was dead, not non-responsive. Now this happens. And this isn't healthy sex, you know. And I'm not approved by saying it ain't healthy sex, you know. So this video's come on longer than I anticipated, you know. So, you know, thank you for bearing with me on that. But, you know, you know, the message is, you know, as a community of gay, bisexual and trans men, is that our sex life should be healthy, you know, and free of shame and stigma, but also free from compulsion, free from addiction, free from, you know, feeling that this is what we've got to do to be accepted in our community. And I hope that makes sense. Thank you.